Hello, welcome to the book club for Advances in Financial Machine Learning from Marco Lopez de Prado. My name is Liliana and I will try to give you a brief perspective of Chapter 16 Machine Learning Asset Allocation. I consider the following key topics for the introduction of this chapter, which is related with the hierarchical risk parity approach in portfolios. HRP portfolios address three major concerns of quadratic optimizers in general and Markovich's critical line algorithm in particular, which are instability, concentration, and underperformance. HRP applies modern mathematics, graph theory, and machine learning techniques to build a diversified portfolio based on the information contained in the covariance matrix. However, unlike quadratic optimizers, HRP does not require the invertibility of the covariance matrix. In fact, HRP can compute a portfolio on an hill degenerated or even a singular covariance matrix, an impossible fit for quadratic optimizers. Monte Carlo experiments show that HRP delivers lower out of sample variance than CLA, even though minimum variance is CLA's optimization objective. HRP produces less risky portfolios out of sample compared to traditional risk parity methods. Historical analyses have also shown that HRP would have performed better than standard approaches. A practical application of HRP is to determine allocations across multiple machine learning strategies. Its sole advantages using this HRP in portfolios. As content to explore, aside from the introduction and conclusion, will be covered the portfolio optimization and Markovitz scores. The from geometrical to hierarchical relationship is made part of this uh, chapter, but it will not be presented due to be too, too technical with empirical mathematical explanations and computation Python code, which I recommend you to take a glance if you want to go deeper in this issue. So you can um, search in the book this uh, for this part. And um, finally, the out of sample Monte Carlo simulations, we'll speak about it too, and uh, some uh, ideas of other authors the, on the further research. The introduction I already developed uh, related with the key concepts, if you want to read a little bit more detail. Starting with the problem with convex portfolio optimization in Markovitz course. In this book, the topics are separated, but I consider they complement each other, so uh, will be presented together. A portfolio construction is perhaps the most recurrent financial problem. Markovitz's monumental insight was to recognize that various levels of risk are associated with different optimal portfolios in terms of risk-adjusted returns leading to the notion of efficient frontier. One implication is that it is rarely optimal to allocate all assets to the investments with highest expected returns. Instead, we should take into account the correlations across alternative investments in order to build a diversified portfolio. Having this, he developed the critical line algorithm, CLA, is a quadratic optimization procedure specifically designed for inequality constrained portfolio optimization problems. This algorithm is notable in that it guarantees that the exact solution is found after a known number of iterations and that it is ingeniously overcome to Karush Kush Tucker condition. What is this? It's the necessary four conditions for a constrained local optimum and it plays a very important role in the optimization theory and algorithm development. Well, despite the brilliance of Markovitch theory, a number of practical problems make CLA solutions somewhat unreliable. A major limitation is that small deviations in the forecasted returns will cause CLA to produce very different portfolios, given that returns can rarely be forecasted with sufficient accuracy. Many authors have opted for dropping them altogether and focusing on the covariance matrix. This had led to risk-based asset allocation approaches of which risk parity is a prominent example. So, what is Markovitch course? The more correlated the investments, the greater the need for diversification, and yet the more likely we will receive unstable solutions. 
the benefits of diversification often are more than offset by estimation errors. Increasing the size of the covariance matrix will only make matters worse, as each covariance coefficient is estimated with fewer degrees of freedom. As most investors know, correlation structures do not remain invariant over such long periods by any reasonable confidence level. The severity of these challenges is to summarize by the fact that even the naive portfolios have been shown to beat mean variance and risk-based optimization out of sample. Passing to the out-of-sample Monte Carlo simulations, based on the calculations performed in the previous part that was not covered, the results, more um, especially, is the CLS portfolio as lower risk than HRP in sample. What is the difference of an in-sample simulation and off-sample simulation? Because of in, in sample, the, um, the observation is on the data sample that we are using already. The off-sample, it's an observation that does not make part of the sample and it will be introduced. Well, however, the portfolio with minimum variance in sample is not necessarily the one with minimum variance out of sample. Um, in this section, we follow the backtesting paradigm in Chapter 13 and evaluate via Monte Carlo the performance out of sample of HRP against CLA's minimum variance and traditional risk parities IVP allocations. This will also help to understand what features make a method preferable to the rest. We have here an example, and as expected, all mean portfolio returns out of sample are essentially zero. The critical difference comes from the variance of out of sample portfolio returns. Although CLA's goal is to deliver the lowest variance, its performance happens to exhibit the highest variance out of sample, greater variance than HRPs. Well, these are the results. As a synthesis for Monte Carlo out of sample simulation, we have that shocks affecting spe a specific investment penalize CLA's concentration, although shocks involving several correlated investments penalize IVP's ignorance of the correlation structure. HRP provides better protection against both common and idiosyncratic shocks by finding a compromise between diversification across all investments and diversification across clusters of investments at multiple hierarchical levels. We have already also um, some critics from other authors. It is relatively straightforward to incorporate forecasted returns, says Ledoit Wolf Stringrich, and Black Litterman style views to the hierarchical approach. In fact, we can realize that at this core, HRP is essentially a robust procedure to avoid matrix inversions, and the same ideas underlying HRP can be used to replace many econometric regressions methods, notorious for their instable outputs like um, value at risk and vector error correction models. We have the figure 16.8, which display, displays a large correlation matrix of fixed securities before and after clustering. And you can see that a traditional optimization or econometric methods fails to recognize the hierarchical structure or financial big data where the numerical instabilities defeat the benefits of the analysis, resulting in unreliable and detrimental outcomes. So, as a conclusion, exact analytical solutions can perform much worse than approximate machine learning solutions. Although mathematically correct, quadratic optimizers in general, and Markovitz CLA in particular, are known to deliver generally unreliable solutions due to their instability, concentration, and underperformance. The root cause for these issues is quad that quadratic optimizers require the inversion of a covariance matrix. Markovitch curse is that the more correlated investments are, the greater 
is the need to diversify the portfolio, and yet the greater are the portfolio's estimation errors. In this chapter, we have exposed a major source of productive optimizers instability. For example, with so many edges connecting the nodes of the graph, weights are allowed to rebalance with complete freedom. This lack of hierarchical structure means that small estimation errors will lead to entirely different solutions. HRP replaces the covariance structure with a tree stru structure accomplishing three goals. Unlike traditional risk, parity methods is fully utilizes the information contained in the covariance matrix. Second, weight stability is recovered. And third, the solution is intuitive by construction. So the algorithm converges in deterministic logarithm, best case or linear in the worst case. HRP is robust, visual, and flexible, allowing the user to introduce constraints for manipulating the three structures without compromising the algorithm search. These properties are derived from the fact that HRP does not require covariance invertibility. Indeed, HRP can compute a portfolio on a hill degenerated or even a singular covariance matrix. Of course, quadratic optimizers like CLA produce the minimum variance portfolio in sample, that is the objective function. Monte Carlo experiments show that HRP delivers lower out of sample variance than CLA or traditional risk parity methods in FIP. This was everything. Thank you. I hope you learned something in this presentation. It was a pleasure.